Okay, let's talk about compound interest. And uh, hopefully you recognize this formula as the formula for continuous compound interest. And this is in contrast to other type of compound, uh, compound interest formulas uh, where we're not uh, compounding continuously. Okay, so continuous compound interest is uh, one formula, and then we have other formulas for other type of situations. But uh, generally, uh, this particular formula here for compound, continuous compound interest, you don't see this until you get into a course, let's say like Algebra 2, College Algebra, a little bit more advanced, because we're going to have to use a little bit more advanced math here to solve this problem. But nothing that you can't handle. As a matter of fact, let me read you the problem, and maybe you want to go ahead and take a shot at it. It says, how long to double $500 if our investment is at 6.75% interest compounded continuously? So you go to your bank, and they're saying, hey, we'll give you 6.75% interest compounded continuously. You deposit $500. How long is it going to take to double that investment? That is the problem. Okay, so here is the formula. Uh, so if you think you could pull this together and give me an answer, that would be awesome. Just going to put that in the comment section. And um, now, if you have studied this before, what is the way, okay, what is the mathematical um, uh, concept or topic that we're going to have to use to solve this uh, problem. Okay, it starts with an L. Okay, so if you know what that is, go ahead and put that in the comment section as well. But I'm going to get into all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school, high school or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can help you excel in your math courses. If you're taking any test that has math on it, for example, GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Marketplace, or CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam, so many exams, they have this little pesky math section on them. You got to get to the math section to pass those exams. I can help you out with that. If you homeschool, I have a very comprehensive homeschool math curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. You can use mine. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But you absolutely must take awesome math notes if you expect to be successful in math. This is something I've seen over decades of teaching math, how important note-taking is. So improve your notes. You'll thank me later. All right, so here is the problem. And uh, again, if you want to go ahead and pause the video and work on it, it should take, you know, if you know what you're doing, it should take you about ah, a minute and a half to do at most. But let's get into it. And first, let's explain the formula for continuous compound interest. So we have these variables A, P, E, R, and T. Let's go ahead and just make sure we understand what these variables stand for. Okay, so A is the amount that we're going to get after we... Uh, um, put in a certain principal. Okay, so just think of a, a bank here. Here's a little bank. <clears throat> We're going to deposit in a principal amount. That's our starting amount. Now, what we get uh, in terms of our return on our investment is this A value. Okay, now E right here, this is the natural base E. Okay, this is a number, right? And hopefully, if you're not familiar with that, then you're going to have a little bit of a rough time in this particular problem, but don't leave. You're going to have, uh, learn a lot. And then we have R. Okay, R up here is our interest rate. Or could, uh, in this particular problem, it's 6.75% uh, 6 uh, interest rate uh, compounded continuously. But we want to express that interest rate as a decimal. So that's R. And then T is our time in years. Okay, so there you go. Now, now that I've kind of explained this to you, you should be able to, uh, you know, have everything you need to solve this problem. So if you want to go ahead and try this problem now, if you weren't uh, quite sure with these variables represented in this formula, there you go. But again, we're going to need to know this right here, something in math to be able to solve this. And let me just go ahead and tell you, we're going to need to understand logarithms, okay, logarithms. And I'll get into exactly why we need to understand logarithms here in a second. But let's get going into the solution. All right, so the problem is we uh, want to know how long it's going to take to double $500. So if we start off with $500, that's our principal amount. So if we end up uh, doubling that, we have $1,000. So that's our amount. That's our return on our investment. So here we already have 
our P equal to 500 and our A is equal to 1,000. Okay, so again, we're talking about this formula right here. I have this and I have this. E is already a number itself. I do have the rate, R, okay, so the rate uh, that's going to be um, compounded continuously is 6.75%, but I need to express this as a decimal, so just move that decimal point two places to the left or divide by 100. There you go, 0 0.0675. So what I'm looking for is T, okay, so that is the problem. How long is it going to take to double $500? In other words, how long is it going to take to uh, grow $500 to $1,000 at this uh, interest rate uh, compounded continuously. So we're solving for T. So what we have here is we're solving for a variable in the exponent. Okay, so this is an exponential equation. All right, so how do you solve expo exponential equations? Well, you use logarithms, okay? How do you solve a logarithmic equation? You use exponents, okay? So you need to be familiar with logarithms, and hopefully you are, but uh, if you're not, just stick around. You'll see how this uh, works. Not that difficult, but um, again, if you're not familiar with logarithms, you need to go back and learn all this stuff. I do have additional videos on logarithms in my Algebra 2 playlist on my YouTube channel, but I teach all of this thoroughly in my courses like Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus, College Algebra. You can find all that in my math help program if you really, really want to get into this stuff. So here is our formula. Let's go ahead and plug in our respective values. So our amount is 1,000, right? That's going to be the final amount, but we're starting off with a $500 principal amount. And there is our natural base E. Again, E is a number, all right? So hopefully you're familiar with E, okay? It's just like the number pi is equal to 3.14 approximately. E is, uh, boy, I'm... I, I think it's like two point, I should know this, uh, seven or something or the other, somewhere around there, okay? So that's what that is approximately equal to, but it's a, um, a rational number, so we use this variable. And now we have our interest rate, 0 0.0675, all right? And then again, we have our variable T. So this is the setup. So you need to know how to solve a basic exponential equation. So if I gave you like 10 is equal to 2... Um, let's say, to the 4 to the x power, something like that. So how do I solve for the exponent? Well, you have to isolate that base and, and uh, that, that power with the exponent. So in this particular basic example, I would first divide both sides of the equation by 2 to get this down to 5 is equal to 4 to the x power, all right? Then here, what would I do to solve right here? Well, I need to take the log of both sides. So I'm pretty much telling you how to solve this. I'm going to erase this here, but this is what you need. This is the math you need to understand to solve this problem. So at this point, I want to isolate the base and the power here. Okay, so I want to isolate this part of the problem. So this is 500 times this. So if I divide both sides of the equation by 500, well, then I'm going to get 1,000 divided by 500, which is 2. I'm just going to write that on this side of the equation. And then we have all of this over here on this side. Okay, so if you understand that, then we are doing good. Okay, now at this point, what do we need to do? Well, this is where your understanding of logarithmic, um, you know, understanding logarithms and log logarithmic equations, but this is an exponential equations. Here, we want to take the log of both sides. Now, you have two choices um, when you're dealing with logarithms, more or less. You can use this key on your calculator, the LOG or the LN key, okay? Always take the, use the ln when we're dealing with the natural base e. Okay, this is the common log. This is base 10. This is base e. Now, hopefully, you understand what I'm talking about. But anytime you see e, you want to use uh, ln as the log. But effectively, and by the way, too, I could just take the log of both sides like this, and you'd get the right answer. But you'd have to do a little bit extra work. Just remember, when you see e, you want to use the natural log ln. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the ln of both sides. So this is ln e to this 0 0.0675t and ln2. So if you go into your calculator, ln2, that's just a, some number. Okay, so don't, don't uh, you know, freak out and be like, oh, what is that? Well, oh, it's just some value. I can actually turn this into a decimal. So keep that in your mind's eye. But here's where, uh, why we need to take the log of both sides. In this case, it's the ln of both sides because I need to, bring down this uh, 
exponent down here in front. This is a property of logarithms. Again, you need to know about logarithms, property of logarithms, how to solve exponential equations, etc. Um, I do have additional videos on this in my YouTube channel, but I teach this thoroughly in my, um, like my Algebra 2 course, anything that I uh, teach logarithms in. But once I take the log of both sides, I can bring this whole thing down here in front of that ln e. Okay, so that's that's the um, power of taking the log of both sides and using these properties of logarithms. So I have 0.0675t, there's my variable, times ln e. Now, if you're really up to speed on things, ln e, <clears throat> you should know, ln e, this is some basic stuff you should know, is just equal to 1. So this is a nice fancy 1 right here. So that just really leaves me with 1 times this. So I have 0.675t, okay, because this is just 1. So 1 times that is just that, is equal to ln 2. And don't, um, when you're doing this, don't start turning these into decimals yet. Okay, wait till you get to the very end of the problem and then put all this stuff into your calculator. So to solve for t, pretty easy here. Just divide both sides of the equation by 0.0675. Okay, 0 0.0675. You can see I don't, I've done all this work in advance. So our final answer will be t is equal to ln2 divided by point, uh, point 0.06, excuse me, 0 0.0675. And when you uh, put this into your calculator, you're going to get approximately 10.27. Okay, that's what t is equal to. But remember, t is in years. So 10.27 10.27 years is how long it's going to take uh, to d get that 500 to a thousand dollars at 6.75 percent interest rate uh, compounded continuously. Okay, so if you got uh, this answer right and you understood everything in it, then I must reward you with an awesome 1982. Mohawk with extra Aquanet hairspray and an A plus and a 100 percent. That's very, very good. Okay, so that's good stuff. Shows me that you understand how to solve exponential equations. You understand about uh, logarithms. You understand about the natural base and uh, understand how to work these uh, compound interest problems. Now, again, this is a continuous compound interest problem. There is other formulas for um, there is another version when we're not compounding continuously. Okay, we can be con. It's a different um, time periods, we can uh, compound. We can compound annually, biannually, you know, quarterly, et cetera, daily, and everything else. So again, different formula, um, and you should be practicing those as well. But if this little video helps you out in some small way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over 1,000 plus math videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like uh, my teaching style, I have a ton of content on my uh, channel that can help you out. Of course, my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.